have to fill in over at Snowda Hills. Oh. Their uh, uh, preacher um, called them on Friday and said that they got the uh, they got kissed by the unicorn. Uh. <laughs> they got COVID. He got COVID. So. <laughs> Their uh, interim. Um, he's a fill. Yeah, he's just you know the guest preacher at this point. Yeah. Okay. Ron Rushing. He's actually a friend of mine. So. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, really neat guy. He's going to do a good job for him. Um, he got the COVID. You know Ron Rush. Ron Rush. Rushing. Oh, Rushing. Yeah. Rushing. Oh, he's, oh, yeah. he's one of our missionaries with right. the Global yeah. uh, uh -huh. Training Network. Yep. Oh, oh. Well, I hope he'll stop playing. Well, he's not because he's positive for COVID. He was, and he was, he was going to preach on encouragement, and he came down positive. <laughs> 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 you like that? <laughs> I said, well, that's what you get for being a positive person. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's turn to the book of Acts this morning. Exciting stuff. This book is, I tell you, I hope it uh, gets your heart pumping. Mm -hmm. This is an exciting, exciting book. Um, so, yeah. Let's uh, let's get going there. Um, Robert, you want to open up and, and read the opening uh, paragraph there in our guide? Uh, this text deals with the preparation for what God is going to do through the mysterious church age. This age was not known to them, nor the Old Testament belie and believers. It involves a special ministry of the Holy Spirit in that He will permanently dwell within his believers for the first time. Because of this, some refer to this book as the Acts of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the name is not part of the inherent inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, thought that was kind of an interesting way for us to dive into, you know, last um, a couple weeks ago when we kind of introduced the study of the book of Acts. Um, you know, and what do we call this? The Acts of the Apostles is the common title for this book. Um, but I'll tell you, if I were to title it, and of course I'm not good at titles, I would call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit because that's what we see throughout this book is the Holy Spirit's working and totally unknown to them. And uh, the church age that we are in is not really fully revealed in the Old Testament. And we read that even in, in the book of Hebrews, mm -hmm. how the, it, was a, um, it was a mystery to the Old Testament believers. Types and shadows. Types and shadows, yeah. yeah. Um, there's things you can point to in the Old Testament. Oh, yeah, well, that's kind of fulfilled in the church age, but they, they didn't know that was coming. Um, and so we have to be patient with our Old Testament believers and our... New Testament, new believers, what did the early church have for the scriptures? The Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, yeah. maybe some of the Psalms. Right, just the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Right, and we're going we're gonna to actually read a little bit about how Peter knew his Old Testament uh, and um, uh, used it in the establishment of what's going on here. So um, mm -hmm. we're, we got to get ready to really understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay? All right, Deborah, you want to read the first question there? Um, what did Jesus say would happen to them in verse 5b? Are we still chapter 1? Chapter 1, verse 5b. Shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from Okay, so this is Jesus sharing um, just before we get into the focus of our text today um, that um, we're going to be going to be what's going to happen a few days from then? Baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Um, and this term has been widely misunderstood, I believe. Um, so let's focus on that for just a moment. Why do you think he uses the term baptism here? So the word baptism, let me pull it up here. I'll give you the, uh, if I can get my, of course I'm not, it's baptizo. Um, 
if I can get it to pull up, I can read it, but maybe my finger's too cold. Oh, it's frozen. Yeah, it's not opening up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so baptism is the Greek word, or the English word that we use for the Greek word that's baptizo, and it means to be fully immersed. Mm -hmm. Okay? How does that apply to his statement that we are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. What does we that mean? We were familiar with John's baptism, which was the immersion. And then Correct. Right. Back. Yep. And that's uh, <clears throat> beginning of verse 5, for John baptized mm -hmm. with water. So he fully immersed people in water. And now he uses that term, he's going to baptize. So what would be the way you might understand the meaning of that? Being identified. <clears throat> Okay, identified, correct. So that was a part of even John's baptism was to identify with his message of repentance. Good. I think that's a part of it. That's not all of it. That's definitely a part of the baptism is to be identified with. Um, but um, if, the, if the Greek word, I'm going to close my program and restart it here so I can read the definition of... Okay, baptizo, from a, um, it means to immerse, submerge, to make whelmed, fully wet. Um, so those are the, the ways that, uh, that the word baptism is, uh, is known to be used in the Greek language. <clears throat> so that being the case, what's, what's Jesus telling us about the Holy Spirit a few days from when he made that statement? There you go. Right, yeah. So something that, you know, in the Old Testament, you, you'll find that the Holy Spirit came and indwelt the individual for the specific purpose for which they were called to do. Saul received the Holy Spirit while he was king, and then when he became disobedient, what happened to the Holy Spirit? He left him. Psalm 51, we remember that? Mm -hmm. Uh, David said that with that almost a lament, take not what from me? Thy Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Thy Holy Spirit from me. So he knew he had the Holy Spirit and he just, he didn't want to lose it. And Jesus is introducing a new idea here. Just before he leaves their presence, he mm -hmm. says, a few days from now, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Something that's never happened before in the history of mankind. Mm. Isn't that exciting? That the Holy Spirit is going to fully envelop you. Full, you're going to be fully identified with. You're going to be, there's nothing about you that's not going to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that something? Yeah. And if, if the, in the Old Testament, before the, you know, this the Pentecost or whatever, <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit was on people, it was a temper. It didn't. It wasn't there for good. Correct. But the Holy Spirit, when Jesus <clears throat> sent him, he'll never leave. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And that's yeah. Yeah, totally right. new to them. So it's, yeah. it's a mind-blowing experience, uh, and we're going to learn in chapter two just how boldly that's introduced. Um, now, with what he says here. Um, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days from now. What's the next question there, Woody, in introduction here? Uh, what did they have to do to experience this baptism? So is there anything in there that's, that instructs us on what they had to do? Wait. That be believers. Yeah. He had to obey his command. He gave them some a command to not leave Jerusalem, but to wait. Okay. Whoever said that. Right. So the Believe ones that are going to be baptized by the Holy Spirit are the ones that hear what? Hear his word? His word. And are present at the time of, his, of, of that ministry, right? So that's all you have to do to be baptized by the Holy Spirit is to... Receive it, to receive the baptism. There's nothing you do to earn it. Very important, because there's a, 
there's an asp there's a group of people in the Christian world that will send the message to you that says you have to do something to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And of course, if you're familiar with that line of thinking, what is the sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit to that group of people? Speaking in tongues. He's been filled. I, I, I've been baptized, baptized this morning. <laughs> Would you interpret what I just said? Yes. What did I just say? He said, uh, you, you better be baptized in the Holy Spirit. No, no, that was the wrong interpretation. <laughs> My interpretation is that's hogwash, is what I just said. Um, no, it's really sad uh, that, we, that, that, that there's a group that, that misinterprets such a key and beautiful part of Scripture to, to, to make the baptism of the Holy Spirit something that it's not. Um, it's nothing they had to do because the, the uh, uh, actually... Um, in one, one message I was listening to, they said, if you will go to the United Pentecostal website, it will tell you what you have to do to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have to do those things to be baptized. Um, and, you know, I'm not... I, I never heard it put like that, that you have to do this or that, but that, that is more the evidence that's what they will say, but that's not what their website says. Right. I've heard right. that you have to kind of practice. And you do have to practice. I was told one time when I, early in my faith walk, went to a, a, a Pentecostal charismatic, and he just said to repeat after him. Oh. Yeah, like you say, practice, learn the language. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's be careful. We, we want to base our faith on what the scripture says. And uh, the, ba the, uh, the, the acts of, uh, of the Holy Spirit are often misinterpreted and misunderstood. And we have to be careful that we truly understand the Holy Spirit. Because why? It would be just like misunderstanding Jesus, wouldn't it? It would be like imparting things into Jesus that's not true. That Jesus came to reform society. That's not true. Um, that Jesus um, was a good man that became the Son of God. That's not true. We would, we would be offended if somebody came and taught something about Jesus that is not according to Scripture. And so uh, the, the teachings in, about the Holy Spirit are a little bit more, uh, a little bit less direct, and so it leads to people coming to the wrong conclusions, unfortunately. And uh, to me, it, it, you know, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to empower one and to unite the body of Christ. In comfort, yeah. right. And comfort. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. And our adversary has used the very doctrine of the Holy Spirit to cause what? Division. Division. Yeah. Really sad. <clears throat> okay, let's jump into our text here for today. Um, and uh, um, <clears throat> this is exciting stuff. And I'll tell you, I'm amazed at how brief this exciting is. So, uh, Bill, you want to read question number one under mining for truth. Verse 9 describes what must happen before the baptism or ministry of the Holy Spirit can begin. What is it? Verse 9 says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Put on one quick verse describing one of the most exciting things <laughs> in Jesus' ministry. He was taken up. Whew. Yes, he left them. And then they received the Holy Spirit. Right, and, and why is that a prerequisite? Are we familiar with what some of the teachings that Jesus did when he was when with he, them? When he is taken up, then, <clears throat> then he would send us another comforter. Another comforter, right. That was his promise. It says, I'm, when he's getting ready to go to the cross, he's kind of done in a lot of ways with a lot of his theological teaching. We, we learned that in the book of John. And he's saying, no, don't worry, I'm going to be leaving you, but I have to leave you because that's the that's the precursor for the Holy Spirit or the another comfort another comforter to come and so that's that's the 
the thing that must happen before the Holy Spirit was to come and start his ministry uh, in place of Jesus' ministry. Do you see the Holy Spirit, his ministry, completely different? And his ministry really started in earnest in a different way, the coming of, of uh, um, this ministry now, with, with him leaving in the, Holy, in the uh, ascension, um, and then a few days from now, they're going to be celebrating the Pentecost. Pentecost was the Jewish holiday, right? And that was the coming and establishment of this new comforter at that point. Laura, you want to read question number two way over there? Laura! How does, how does this event described in the Gospels? Mark 16, 19 says, So when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And Luke 24, 15, 51 says, And he led them out of let them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hand and blessed them. It, and it came about that while he was blessing them, he parted from them. Okay. Any difference, first off? Is there any difference in those, uh, in those scriptures from what we read in Acts? Okay. Nothing really bold, um, right? No. Nothing really bold. I mean, they're different. They they say it in a different way, but it's the same event, right? <clears throat> yeah, just it, it doesn't mention him being seated at the right hand of God. Right. That's why I like the the mark adds to that. That where is he now? At the right hand of God, ever interceding. Yep, he's at the right hand of God. Yeah. Um, ever yeah. interceding because God needs a lot of intercession. Lots of intercession. My uh, NIV version says here that the earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses 9 through 20 in Mark. Right. Mark 16. Right. I was thinking So, yeah, Mark, that, that section of Mark is a little bit quote, unquote, questionable as to whether it's in the original languages or not. But it, it's certainly not, yeah. it's not contrary to anything that's let up, anything else that's in Scripture. So, right. it doesn't concern me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a new teaching. That, any, anything that we find that's a new teaching that's contrary to other teachings in the scripture would be vitally concerning, but, it's, but that's not. Okay, um, anybody else, um, I don't know, disappointed? Is, would it be the word? That there isn't like a whole paragraph describing oh. this event? I mean, wow! The well, ascension of Jesus Christ. Just think of what does that mean to us? Yeah. The ascension of Jesus Christ from being on this earth to heaven. What does that mean? What does it mean as to Jesus and what he is? Uh, and, and would God the Father <coughs> have received him into heaven? if he hadn't fully completed his work. No. So the ascension tells us that, doesn't it? <clears throat> his work was completed. Right? It is yeah. finished. It is finished. Yes. yes, his work is finished. There's another work that's yet to begin, and of course that's what this book started with, right? Um, in verse 1, all that Jesus began to do and teach, and yet... With the ascension, we understand that he's done. So what message do we get from that? Jesus ascends up into heaven. His heavenly Father opens up his arms and says, Welcome, uh, well done, thy faithful servant. Um, you've completed the work. You, you're done. You've fulfilled everything. And yet, in the book of Acts, it says all about what Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up into heaven. Is, he, is, is the ministry of Jesus done? Just begun. Just begun. It's just begun, Bill. Yeah. And Laura shakes her head. She, she understands. It's not. So where is the ministry of, the, of Jesus continuing? Right here. Right here. In his church. In the ecclesia. <clears throat> in his ecclesia. In the called out ones. Right. 
in his church. Um, and uh, that's what this exciting book is really all about, is the ministry of the church and the Holy Spirit uh, within that. So, exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, Sherry, you want to read uh, <clears throat> the next question? And then if I can have some volunteers on those verses. Who wants to volunteer? Uh, Sherry, you want to re read the one in Acts 1? And then... Uh, I'll do Mark. Um, Laura will do Mark because she's already there. And then who wants to do the Luke 24:52? I can. All right. All right, go ahead, Sherry. How do the following verses describe what his followers did after the ascension? Okay. So Acts 12, 1, 12 through 14. They were at the Mount of Olives when this happened. So now they walked the half mile back to Jerusalem and held a prayer meeting in upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here is a list of those who were present at the meeting. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, mm -hmm. Simon, who called the also called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and the brothers of Jesus. Several women, including Jesus' mother, was also there. All right, good. There's a description of what they did after the ascension. Laura, what's it say in Mark? <clears throat> and they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that follow. By the signs that follow. Okay, a little interesting here. A little bit of a different description of what they were doing. In Acts, it tells us they were in the upper room praying. Mm -hmm. Now, in Mark, it tells us what, what were they doing there? Preaching. They're out sharing. Mm -hmm. Right? Fulfilling what they, it said earlier that they would be witnesses. They, they, they could. What is it when you when you experience something that is so dramatic? What do you just have to do? You tell somebody about it. Somebody. You got to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. How many of you saw the uh, Thunderbirds practicing over service to this last week? Heard them. You heard them. Saw sure. them. Saw on trails. I saw pictures on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. With, with you know. It was pretty neat. Yeah. It looked like, you know, with, with the, all the fog up there, it looked like, you know, <coughs> drunken pilots flying all over. <laughs> uh, when something dramatic happens, you just, you have to say something, don't you? I like how they portrayed that in the movie The Chosen. You know, they must know, and they were all excited and ran around yeah, the town. And yeah, Just telling it. So, we've gone from a group of people that were cowering after the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Afraid they were going to be the next ones to die. And now what are they doing? Bold. Praise you God. Glorify God. Enjoy it out sharing there. Mm -hmm. Just in 40 days, that 40 day period from when Jesus uh, was crucified and resurrected to the time now. 40 days. Wow. Exciting stuff. So what's it say in Luke? Uh, 2452. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. <clears throat> that Worshiping sound? and joyful, yeah. It was. I'm sure it was a, a, a contagious joy and un, uncontainable that day. Yeah. 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 People who saw. Him, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. What? What's overcome you? Yeah. 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 Amen. Uh, I could not help but but reminded of the term enthusiasm. Yes. Okay. They were enthusiastic, right? You, and, and I don't know if you remember what I shared a few weeks ago, uh, the term enthusiasm, mm -hmm. enthusiastic, means to be imparted with God, <coughs> theos, God, mm -hmm. you know, and so they were, they were filled with excitement from the Lord and it just had to get out, it just could not be restrained. Yeah. They did not have to have any kind of evangelism courses. They didn't have the... Filling of the Holy Spirit yet either. They were just speaking what they right. knew. And right, yeah, the, the, the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. ministry <laughs> hasn't quite been introduced yet. Mm -hmm. Correct. Good. All right, now let's go to uh, 
the next uh, question, number four. That would be Scott. Yeah. Right. Um, read Peter, read. speech in verse 15 through 26. So if we want to, do we want to just do a round robin there and we'll just re each read a verse? Sure. Um, and then that we'll go on to the care. questions. <clears throat> And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the name, the number of names was about 120 and said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth, before by the mouth of David concerning mm -hmm. Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where is Peter? No, 17, uh, verse 17. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Oh, I better skip. You, can't you want to skip? You can't see him today? Okay. I'm not looking too good today. Okay. okay. Yep. You're looking fine to us. <laughs> okay, verse 18. Now, this man acquired a field with the price of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, nah. and all his intestines gushed out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> pretty descriptive. That's pretty descriptive. <laughs> pretty descriptive, yeah. Go ahead, Robert. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about <clears throat> this, so they called that field in their language, Echodama, that is, field of blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling place be desolate and let no one live in it. Mm -hmm. Let another and let another take his office. 21. So now we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Go ahead, Bill, verse 22. Beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of the resurrection? Okay. Laura, 23. And he put forward two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, pronounced terribly, sorry. Who was also called just to send Matthias. <laughs> okay. So I'm doing 26. Uh, well, 24. Yeah, verse 24 for you. Well, I don't have 24. Oh, it's your They put it together. Oh, it's all oh, put together. Okay. Well, okay. not all of it. Okay, just... I'll read 24. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show which one of these two thou hast chosen. Okay, Scott. To take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place, and they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Okay, <laughs> so this is Peter's first um, <clears throat> leadership, really, in, the, in, in what's <laughs> about to happen. Peter's standing up and taking on some leadership here. Um, and, and to me, that's always been uh, an indication that the Holy Spirit really did fall on Peter. Because previous to that, he was denying the Lord. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Here he is now. Standing up holy, leading this group of people. <clears throat> yeah, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> All right, so, um, <clears throat> Scott, you want to read the question A there? How was Peter come, how has Peter come to understand the actions of Judas? Verse 16. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the, by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Okay, so how, does he, how has he come to understand the actions of Judas? How would you explain it? Jesus had predicted it, it would happen, and they denied it first, and then now it's acknowledging that yeah, that's right. it was right. 
Right. Acknowledgement might be a great word to put in there, right? He acknowledged <clears throat> that it's something that had to happen, right? Yes. Even <clears throat> back in David's time, Say it is it's not aside. Right. Yeah, way back in the book of Psalms it was talking about. <clears throat> and, and Peter has now come to a new realization. Do you believe he had that realization on the night that he was there cutting off the ear of Malchus? No, no. I think it happened when Jesus confronted him and gave him, he denied him three times and then he was able to tell him he loved him three times. Right, in addition Jesus. to that, right, and then um, I think we'll talk about it here, but okay. uh, some other things occurred in Peter. See, Jesus didn't stop his ministry at the resurrection. He enhanced it. Mm -hmm. His ministry was enhanced mm -hmm. during that period of time because now, um, before the resurrection, <clears throat> his ministry was focused on a lot of things, right? A lot of stuff. Establishing his deity, establishing his qualification to become mm -hmm. our sacrifice. There was a lot of things going on during those three years of public ministry. Mm -hmm. And then in 40 days, he gave a condensed seminary education to his followers. In addition to that, he breathed on them, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. um, the Holy Spirit was already ministering in Peter's life. And we can see that the, the change that's gone on in Peter, he's gone from timid uh, to uh, uh, bold, right? Yes. Now, he's always been outspoken, right? Right, right. He was uh, always He's impulsive. always been, you know, Peter's been described as the guy with the mouth, with mm -hmm. the shape of a foot. Mm -hmm. Right? <coughs> speaking before he thinks. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Peter got something in common there. <laughs> okay, so uh, Janine, you want to read? Oh, sorry. Letter B. On what basis did Peter propose that Ju Ju Judas be re <laughs> replaced? <laughs> if I can get it out there. Um, because it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it. So he was discerning that, okay, we need to um, take care of this according to, <coughs> to the scripture and prophecy. Okay, right, so this... And it wasn't based on the idea that, well, one of our disciples is gone now, we gotta replace him because mm -hmm. of the numbers. It was based on because he was a traitor to Jesus. Right. Yeah, very important. Because there, there's actually some theological debate as to whether Peter was was justified in making this proposal. Hmm. There are some theologians that will say, oh, Peter, Peter overstepped his authority. There was no reason to replace because God was going to replace him with somebody else. And who might that have been? Who might be the one that be considered one of the twelve? Paul. Some people think Paul. Oh, okay. Major right. contributor to the New Testament. Calls himself an apostle. But even Paul, in his description, will tell you, I'm, a, I'm an apostle of a different sort. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm an apostle of a different sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, so really, there were how many, according to Scripture, how many capital A apostles are there? Twelve plus one of a different sort. So Paul was an apostle, capital A title, position. <clears throat> Small a, apostle means sent ones. Mm -hmm. So we are all uh, apostles in the short a sense. We are all sent out, mm -hmm. right? We are all to declare the enthusiasm that we have, mm -hmm. right? We're to be witnesses to the enthusiasm we have, right? Okay, good. All right, so... Um, it's on the basis of scripture that, <clears throat> that Peter is proposing to replace Judas. And I find it really exciting that in, in the, the Holy Spirit had to open this up to Peter. Psalms is not a small book, right? But then all of a sudden, after the resurrection, they're in there praying in this upper room, and the Holy Spirit uh, inspires Peter to maybe go to that psalm. And there's actually two psalms referred to here. The first half of this comes from Psalm 69, and the second half comes from Psalm 109. So, um, did he just sit down and read all the psalms and see, well, maybe, see if I can make up some sense? I believe the Holy Spirit led him to these psalms. Well, the, where's the scripture, and it's when Jesus uh, 
were, I think it was after he uh, appeared to them, but he breathed on them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think you had talked about that. I think I'm gonna I last maybe, week. I know. I, yeah, and I can't remember. So maybe they were going on uh, that yeah, too. You know? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the very important. I can't remember if I've included it. I know I included it in my yeah, study, but whether I put it down in this thing or not. But yeah, there was a point where Jesus breathed on them. And they received the Holy been. Spirit. So the apostles received the Holy Spirit at that time. Not on the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost was a different um, manifestation. Um, okay. But they received the ministry of the Holy Spirit at that time directly from Jesus. Okay, so he's, he's proposed it um, based on the authority of Scripture. So we can do that today, right? That's how we ought to live our lives, on the authority of Scripture, not, uh, and that's why last week when we shared the, the way how to share Jesus, we share Jesus on the authority of my opinion, or what works for me, or on, on uh, I share Jesus on, on all kinds of arguments. No, we share Jesus on the authority of Scripture, so we want to get people to those five or six verses. Let the, let the Word of God penetrate their heart. Let the Holy Spirit work through the power of the Scriptures, not your arguments. And that's too much, too much of the term apologetics. There's a whole system of theology on apologetics. And it's good to know why you believe what you believe. It's mm -hmm. great to be able to share that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, send, it can send the wrong message. Uh, like Ravi Zacharias was a great apologist for the faith. He well, could argue... He could argue with Muslims, and, all, and, and, and I was in, enraptured by the way he could take reasoning into um, uh, our faith. And it was very exciting. And I think his tagline was helping uh, thinkers believe and believers think, was his tagline. Uh, but not a lot of scripture was shared in his apologetics. And his life ultimately reflected the lack of scriptural authority in his life. What a tragedy. So we have to be careful. Let's let the scriptures uh, speak. And when someone says, well, what do, you mean, what do you think? At that point, when somebody asks you that question, you, know, you, know, you might just say, well, here's what I think. But what you need to say is, well, where is that based in your scripture? So that I can go, well, it says in Hebrews, or it says in Psalms, or it says in Deuteronomy, or in Revelation. This is why I believe that. Okay? And sometimes your brief, the conversation is so brief you don't have the opportunity to do that verbally to the person you're talking to. But so that you know it, that I believe that because the Word of God says it. Okay, so Peter was doing this on the authority of Scripture. <laughs> Mike, I, 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 have some, I have some questions. Um, <clears throat> when they're in the upper room in and the Holy Spirit came and indwelt them. <clears throat> Did they know it right then? Did they know? And what was the evidence that they knew that if they did know it right then, what was the evidence? That Great they question, and we'll <clears throat> talk about that next week when we talk about <laughs> chapter two. Okay. You get all week to. You get all week to read. I mean, I, I have my ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but that's what we're going to focus on next week, because chapter two is where all that happens. Right, and so that's going to be exciting about next week's lesson. So we'll, we'll okay. can we can we put we that on the show? Here, but All those in favor of shelving the question? <laughs> no, we will be here. Yeah, you're going to be here. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, cancel all your plans. You have to be here. <laughs> right. Anywhere in a week. Off. It's a following right. Sunday. We won't be. Here. Okay, good. So we'll be here to be able to talk about that because that's an exciting question, and, and we'll be, be focusing on that. C. C. He does see. He does see? I do see. Yeah. Even though you don't see good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> I need Braille here. How did, the, how did they make the decision of who would replace Judas? Really important. Uh, uh, that we see how they replaced Judas. And so, Janine, do you want to read 24 through 26? Then they prayed, 
Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the 11 apostles. Okay, so bottom line is, how did they select Matthias? By lots, lots. They prayed first. They prayed first. They prayed first. But they prayed first. Right? Can't forget that. Yes. But after they prayed, that's when they threw the dice. And they said, odd number is Matthias, and even number is who? The Bartholomew? Joseph. Or Bar Bar Barsabbas. Bar yes. And Barsabbas yes. means son of Saba. Um, so, yeah. he's also called Justice. Um, in the Old Testament, they used the Umum and the Thurman or whatever when they're lots and then they were told exactly how to read it. Yeah, uh, very common in the Old yeah, Testament. Yeah, how they Very common in the Old Testament for leader. decisions yeah. to be made by what is termed here lot. By chance. <laughs> right? Can we say, can we all agree that it was by chance? No. God decided <laughs> how it was what? going to be. Wait a minute! <laughs> in human terms it's by chance but we know who orchestrated the outcome, right? Right. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, it's interesting, in fact, the next question, um, the next question, how is this similar to the way the others were chosen? How were the original 12 disciples chosen? Jesus, Jesus. chose them himself. said, you, come here. Come follow me. Come follow me. Let me make you fishers of men. But he prayed on that. Is this system different? Yes and no. God really did it. Exactly, Bill. Ultimately, God called all of them. And that's how this was used at that time. Okay? God used the system of lot or chance <coughs> to call them. It was not <clears throat> human. People were not involved. They didn't say all in favor. Right. The people chose the two to present after prayer. And so that's where God used the people. They selected a couple within them. But who's the one that chose which one? It was God. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we see that here. That... that uh, um, God is involved yeah. in, in, in how that um, came out. So there's a similarity, but it's different and, and the same, right? It's different because God, Jesus didn't throw the lots and say, okay, which one? Is it going to be Matthew or uh, Joe? Matthew? Okay. No, Jesus chose them. picked names out of a hat or, or something. Picked names out yeah, of a hat. Right. Jesus yeah. chose each one of them for, for his purposes, and one of them was the devil. One of them was Judas. Um, and in the same way he chose Matthias. Behold, behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he was still a wily Jew. He was <laughs> no guile. No guile. Okay. Um, Robert, do I read uh, C2? C2? This is the last time scripture refers to the use of lots in mm -hmm. making a decision. How are we to make decisions now? James 1, 5 and 5, 13, 18. He wants us to pray. He wants us to pray for sure. Yeah. So that, that avenue stays active, doesn't it? The first thing they did was pray. Yeah. Then they threw lots because that's where they got the sign from the Lord. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. Who gives generously to all without without finding fault and will be given to him. Okay. One by. So again, even in that, it involves prayer, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See how prayer is vitally important in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, to give us wisdom. Right, before we move on and you know talk about Matthias and his um, his being chosen, whatever, but um, mm -hmm. the scripture says that. He, 
you know, Jesus had followers, and then he spent all night praying in the garden, and then the next day he chose the 12. And then, um, obviously, Jesus is one of them. But then it says that Matthias was one of his followers also. So I thought, well, that, that was really good, that even though Matthias hadn't been chosen as one of the original 12, he still stuck with it. Correct. And, and um, uh, then, then he came up, I guess, and had his turn, so to speak. So I thought that was neat. That, yeah. that spoke to me that, yeah, you know, just hang in there and, and not don't that, get... <laughs> but who else? Our but, yeah, right, and he was... He was yeah. one of the two proposed because yeah. he qualified. Uh -huh. so he but he wasn't up. chosen. So then he went out and formed his own church. Right. <laughs> because he got mad, he got his feelings hurt. He had something to pray through. And so he went out and formed his own church. After. That's why we never hear of our Sabbath again. He started the Second Baptist Church of Jerusalem, which never took off, by the way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I saw that. Just kidding. I know, I know. Well, and what yeah. is that? And it does tell us something interesting. Oh, i got to go. Um, okay. Oh. It does tell us something interesting about that there were many other followers in addition to the 12, right? Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, and yes. ladies were included in that. Okay, guys, I've got to take off. Okay. Uh, and so if you guys would work through the rest of that on the second, on the back pages. So Who's preaching just, then? I'm coming back. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> greet them all. Yeah, 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 do greet them all. Okay. I will send okay. your greetings, yes. Okay. Yes. Alrighty, thank you guys. Okay. Uh, it's Tim's Hill. 951. We gotta finish the second side. Can't read without all the Can I read the next part? James 5, 13 to 18. Yeah, read the James 1.